Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to explain the hardware inside a desktop PC. This includes its motherboard, which is fitted with a processor, cooler, memory, an SSD or hard drive, and sometimes a separate graphics card. Mount all of these in a case and add a power supply and various cables, and we have a desktop computer. But we put this one together rather quickly. So let's take everything apart so I can explain PC hardware in more depth. Inside all desktop PCs, we find a main circuit board or motherboard to which all other hardware is connected. Many PC components insert directly into a motherboard socket, and in most desktop PCs this includes the central processing unit, or CPU. This is the hardware that actually runs computer programs and is secured in place by a retaining mechanism. The speed of a CPU is measured in gigahertz, with most modern processors having a speed of 2 gigahertz or more. Because modern microprocessors execute billions of operations per second, they generate a lot of heat. They therefore need to be fitted with a cooler, which is usually a metal heatsink and a fan. And, as we can see, when fitted, the cooler completely hides the processor from view. In addition to a processor, all computers require some random access memory or RAM. This is a form of temporary or volatile storage into which programs and data are loaded when the system is running. RAM modules are normally inserted into DIMM or dual inline memory module slots, with most motherboards having two or more DIMM slots that are arranged into one or more banks. Today, at least 4 gigabytes of RAM is required to successfully run a modern operating system, with 8, 16 and 32 gigabytes of RAM being common in a modern desktop PC. As the contents of RAM are lost when power is removed, all computers require some non-volatile storage to retain their operating system, applications and user data when they're switched off. For this purpose, a desktop PC will be fitted with at least one solid-state drive, abbreviated to SSD, or a hard disk drive, otherwise known as an HDD. SSDs store data on non-volatile memory chips, whilst hard drives read and write data to spinning magnetic platters. The capacities of SSDs and hard drives are measured in gigabytes and increasingly terabytes, with a modern PC usually having a main or system drive at least 250 gigabytes in capacity. Whilst hard drives are slower than SSDs and are less robust, they do cost less per gigabyte. It's therefore not uncommon for a PC to have an SSD as the system drive on which its operating system and some programs and data are located, as well as a much larger capacity hard drive for the storage of games, videos or other very large data files. Some desktop PCs are also fitted with an optical drive for reading and writing CDs, DVDs and possibly Blu-ray discs, although this is becoming less common. Traditionally, as we can see here, optical drives, hard drives and SSDs have been fitted in bays or cages located at the front of a desktop computer's case. Several different interfaces can be used to connect drives. Most modern PC motherboards have a bank of SATA or serial ATA ports, and these can be used to connect a hard drive, optical drive or SSD via an appropriate cable. However, many modern motherboards also have one or more M.2 slots into which an SSD can be inserted and retained with a screw. Indeed, increasingly, many desktop PCs are fitted with an M.2 SSD as their system drive. Note that M.2 SSDs come with either a SATA interface or a faster form of data connection known as MVME, which stands for Non-Volatile Memory Express. In addition to processor and RAM sockets and M.2 and SATA ports, PC motherboards feature a whole host of other components and connectors. These include the motherboard's chipset, 
which in modern PCs is a single integrated circuit that helps the processor to communicate with many of the computer's other components and peripherals. Like the CPU, the chipset requires a heatsink under which it's obscured from view. To receive electricity, modern motherboards have two ATX power connectors that hook up to their power supply. Somewhere on the motherboard, there will also be a small battery that retains the time and sometimes other settings when the computer is turned off. Rotating to the left edge of the motherboard, we find a range of connectors that protrude from a desktop PC's back panel. These include an Ethernet port for a wired network connection, as well as USB ports for connecting external storage and other devices. The computer's keyboard and mouse are usually also connected to USB ports, although legacy PS2 mouse and keyboard sockets are still found on many desktop PC motherboards. In addition, there will be audio jacks and some combination of HDMI, VGA and display ports for connecting a monitor if the PC does not have a separate graphics card. Talking of which, south of the processor and RAM sockets, a desktop PC will have one or more Peripheral Component Interconnect Express or PCIe slots. These can be fitted with many different kinds of expansion card, the most common of which is a graphics card. This contains a powerful GPU or graphics processing unit and is necessary in a PC but is used for high-end gaming or to run the most demanding video editing and related applications. Finally, to have an operational computer, we need to add a power supply and ideally a case. This typically has removable side panels to facilitate maintenance and upgrading and is usually fitted with one or more fans to assist with cooling. So, if we now put on the side panels, and add a monitor, keyboard and rodent, we have a fully functional desktop PC all ready to watch an explaining computer's video. In the 1980s and 1990s, desktop PCs changed the world. Today, many people are more likely to use a laptop or a tablet or a smartphone for many of their computing activities. But these are still based on the same kinds of technology, they all have a processor and memory and storage, and so if you want to understand computer hardware, a desktop PC is still a good place to start. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please smash that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.